Welcome back to the GSTL. I am Wolf. With me is Calder, and with us is Slayers versus Enes Hosa. Enes Hosa currently up 1-0 with Freaky showing some great investor play, but he's got his work cut out for him, playing up against Crank here on Entomb Valley. This is going to be a good one, and I'm really excited about it, the Freaky's play. He showed us a very unique style in a ZVZ just now, something that you might see on ladder, but usually not in a competitive environment as the GSL, so he made it work and now he's up against the Protoss. We are in Tomb Valley, which is all historically speaking favoring Protoss, so we might just see something out of the ordinary from him uh, once again. Yeah, I think we absolutely will, man. I think he, he may even show an all-in today. You know, time may tell, but, well, time will tell. It's not about maybes here. It's really interesting to see Crank, by the way, with a very, very bad record so far against Zerg, but this is in Tomb Valley and I'm pretty sure that he knows how to deal with Zerg on this map. Freaky, on the other hand, has only one uh, game against Protoss that I have on record here against Ace and he won in the KSL, so a 100% win ratio. Let's see if that actually is still true yeah, after we'll the second it. game. <laughs> we'll find out, man. It's a good start. This is the GSTL with Calder and Wolf. NS Hosa against Slayers in Toon Valley. I love those map intros. They're, yeah, they're really good. nice. I like them. Well, to the top right of Entombed Valley, we have our Protoss player here. Slayer's team is down a map, and uh, this is the one player that sh uh, yeah, well, that they want to change things. He needs to step it up a bit. It is... Slayer's Tranker! Slayer's Trank here up against the Zerg player, the starting player for NS Hosa. And, well, we are going to see if... Player starting to the bottom right in the blue is able to take another win. This is. And it's also Freaky! Let's talk about this map a little bit more. We've we talked about how this is such a tough map for uh, Zerg, but the reason why it's tough is because you are forced to play a certain playstyle. You have to take your third very cautiously, and you basically have to bank on the late game where you have to make a ton of spines, your opponent's likely going to have a mothership. All the battles occur at that fourth base, that's the most critical point. But as far as win rate goes on this map, we've had a total of 94 games played, and the total and the, the wins for Zerg are 46, the wins for Pros are 47. If in fact, our Zerg player Freaky wins today. We'll have a 50% win rate on this map. 47-47. Wow, he's been a Slayers Boxer fan since 2001. He's like the hipster Boxer fan. <laughs> I'm so, just blown away by the stat. Yeah, just, that, I was as well. Because, you know, everyone complains about this map, but you look up the stats and it's like, well, actually, this map is, as far as win rate goes, balanced. But does I that mean the really map is balanced? I don't no. really trust the, uh, the, those the GSTL, uh, GSL and GSTL statistics. They are uh, StarCraft 2 International TLPD. Okay. All hell, the Emperor boxer fighting. I used to watch Brood War. Then, <laughs> what? then it took an arrow to the knee. I don't know about that comment, but... Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm still really surprised by this because from uh, what I just, from a personal perspective now, casting these games, experiences that most Protoss players are really comfortable on this map and uh, love to play it because they can't just rely on these three bases. This is something we see over and over again, just taking the, uh, the natural first, trying to just transition into a three base play that's very easy to defend because you can hold those two rams and it forces the Zerg player in a playing style that he does not really like all that much because it's just so hard to put aggression under the Brodos on three bases. And as Wolf already pointed out, the fourth base is where usually all the action happens as Protoss just pushes out and takes this. Now in Korea, in fact, this has a positive win rate in ZVP, 22 to 21, a 51.2% win rate for Zerg. Again though, the reason I feel the map may be tougher for a Zerg is because it forces a certain playstyle. Does that mean that the Zerg has to play harder than the Protoss? Arguably some might say yes, the Zerg might have to do better than the Protoss, but that's, you know, that's debatable. But that's kind of where the map issue comes from, because you can't just look at win rates and say a map is balanced. You can't look at win rates and say a race is balanced, in fact. Oh, wow. Look at his upgrade. Yeah, man. He's getting shields first. This is actually crazy. This almost indicates Stargate play from the start. There's hardly any reason otherwise to go for this upgrade. 
Oh, he cancels it. He cancels it and starts warp gate research in a sentry. I think it may have been a mistake. Although I was really surprised. There's no, this. there's no reason why he would have accidentally done that. There's, it's just so. But there's also no reason why you would purposely do it because if you want to fake an upgrade because your opponent is scouting, you would go for the cheaper, cheaper upgrade. upgrade. Yeah, shields is 150, 150. That was That's odd. the Stargate as well. It might have been a misclick. It might have been a change in mind. But this is something that I've never seen before. Protoss going for shields first in this matchup. But you were spot on about the Stargate play. This is exactly what we see out of Crank. Yep, he's gonna. Potentially put some pressure on his opponent with that Stargate play. There's a good positions for a Zerg player versus Stargate because the third base is going to be further away. The Void Rays and Phoenixes are going to have to fly a little bit further to get there. Triple gas now for Freaky. He's going straight for the triple gas. Yep, they've all finished here. Putting him up to four. He does start an evolution chamber here as well. No lair tech from him, of course, just yet. Doesn't quite have that gas yet. We do see a Void Ray first coming out from the Stargate, and he's likely going to use this to control the third base, slow down creep a little bit, and uh, I don't think he's going to go for a queen killing thing. That's kind of fallen out of style right now, where you follow up with Phoenixes, lift up the queens, and try to take them out with a Void Ray. That's basically completely out of style these days. Four more drones coming out here. He makes a macro hatch rather than taking the third, something I really approve of on this map, and that's pretty much what you have to do as Zerg on this map. Uh, the third base is so exposed. Again, these are really good positions for Freaky, but even so, it, it's tough. The one thing that I'm really curious about here is that with all this gas that uh, Freaky is getting, I would usually assume that, or normally assume that he's going for a Mutalisk style. He already builds the first few Spore Crawlers as he realizes his opponent is starting with a Stargate. And you can go Mutalisks against one Stargate. That's definitely possible. You can also just transition into Infestation Pit. It's basically a matter of preference, what you, exactly you do. But on two bases with all this gas, I feel like the initial idea was to go for a spy attack here. He might, but no, he might just drop the infestation pit to counter potential uh, air units and be a little bit more safer. We'll see in the few seconds. Yeah, we'll see. We'll find out very soon. The Phoenix comes in, is chased away. I think he's going to drop it after the Phoenix is gone. The Void Ray is trying to deny creep. In fact, he's overextending a little bit with it too much, taking a ton of damage. He scouts no yes, third base, and it is going to be yep. Investors. I think the smarter choice here, and with the, the amount of queens he has nearby, the Phoenix base, he's probably not going to be able to see this. He doesn't take a third base, though, and this is exactly what led me to believe that he might go for a two-base Muta timing here and trying to attack his opponent with their units, because usually you would already see a third hatchery for Zerg on this map. Of course, it's always a bit crucial that you scout your opponent and see if he's going for some kind of two-base all-in. But this is not likely on a Tomb Valley. If the Protoss is not trying to surprise his opponent, he will always try to take this third base just because the map offers him the opportunity to do so. And, well, what exactly is Freaky going uh, to do now? He's going for Pathogen Glance, no third base just yet. Good creep spread. But what is his mid-game plan? Well, he's losing a lot of Overlords right now. He pulled the majority of his Overlords back after the first Void Ray camp, but he's losing more. He's at 83 out of 70 now. He's going for a big attack at the third base of the Protoss. He's going to force some force fields out here, and he may even get one Sentry with full energy. Oh, he gets it! Streams in with the Lings and Tykes to take down one additional pile and walks back immediately now as the force fields are gone. The Pretty seven Infestors are now building. Yeah, these seven Infestors are going to be crucial. The Void Ray is trying to deny the hatchery over here. He doesn't have any queens in position, but they will get over in time to stop him. This Void Ray has been so annoying. Four kills, all of them overlords. Void Ray does get pushed back. He may even damage it further. He does take a few more hits. Oh, and he's going off creep. He's on creep, so he will be able to kill this. A he big takes mistake. The Void Ray down. I wonder what Freaky is going to do. We saw already in the past an attack with Infestors against the Protoss player that tried to secure three bases, and it did not work. It at usually does all. not work. Dropping the energy in the Infested Terrans, trying to break through, is something that you might try to attempt. And there are the Zerglings, so he's already trying to put up some pressure here. I think he's going to try it. You know, he's killed a few sentries with that earlier attack. He has a decent Infestor count. And also, he knows his opponent's Colossus is not going to be out, not even close. He Fleet Beacon on the way already for Crank, the fastest Fleet Beacon I've ever seen. He sees the he sees the Hive Tech. He sees the Hive Tech, and this is why he starts yeah, the Fleet a great Beacon. Timing he sees here. the third as well, so this aggression will, might do some damage. Uh, Freaky trying to put on some pressure. There are no cannons in play here. He needs cannons likely to hold this. Now, if he catches these earlies right now, oh. And here they come, the Infested Terrans. He's oh, dropping man, he all of them on the high ground. 
He's going to break through here. He's taking out the sentries. Some of the stalkers out of position, not even firing here. He's losing so much, and the Zerli's not quite able to break through, in fact. I thought he was going to do much no. more with this. They were Most of the Zerlis were not attacking. I think he could have easily killed those gates if he targeted better. In the end, he traded energy, but that's energy that's missing right now. He could have even targeted the Zealot that was blocking the Lings, and this I don't know what happened. This is the fastest Mothership that I've ever seen. Yeah, Mothership at 12 minutes here. And this is actually going to be great for Crank, since he didn't really lose too much to that attack. I, I'm so serious. If he killed the Zealot that was blocking, that only has 38 hit points with some Infest Terrans, those Lings would have gotten in. The game may have ended. But as a result, I mean, at this point, Crank is in a great position. He's denying creep with these Phoenixes right now. His opponent hasn't even started the fourth base. He's going, he's going to have a mothership before Greater Spire is done. I mean, I cannot stress enough how great you must feel as a Protoss to know that. Double Robo going down here as well. Once again, the attack at the wall and trying to get in here. The Zealot is hard pressed. The Zealot actually dies, but we have a few more units to make sure that the Zerg is not being able to stream in with his links. Another Queen dies, though. Double lift as there are only three phoenixes. You need four to kill a queen in one lift. Yep, and he will actually fungle oh, these nice. phoenixes and take them out. Will he uh, see uh, uh, the greater uh, uh. fire? He sees it, he but he already gets knew. Away. He will get away too. That's really weird. But he now he knows for sure. He's got to be feeling. Like, so happy. Oh, I, my mothership's gonna be out before his greater spire is done. The three bases are ready for Crank, and now he's getting all this tech. He does not only get the upgrades at the forge, but we have Blink, we have the War Prism, we have also Colossi and the uh, not only the Twilight Council, the Twilight Council finished ages ago, three but we have the Templar Archive. Plus three coming out as well as plus two armor, and you know, Freaky's investor play has been really aggressive. He could have done more, and I think his plan was to do more. But now he's finding himself treading on thin water here, as now his opponent is taking a fourth base. He cannot deny this. It doesn't matter how many Zerlings he has out. His Zerlings are not as heavily upgraded. There's a Mothership out on the field. Which basically means that the Mothership is already uh, getting energy while the Broodlords are just now morphing, so he will have a Vortex in time. And let's not forget that we've seen a really interesting Mothership play just recently. Kivikaki was known for this as well, just using Recall. And this has been uh, used in the GSL too with uh, a lot of success. So I'm curious to see if we might just see it again. A very mobile army with the Blink Stalkers. He could try to put some pressure on this opponent and then just recall his units as soon as they are endangered. We may see it. Oh, look at this hatchery positioning on the left side of the map. He takes a like hatchery it. that's really close to his opponent's base that allows him to pressure and defend. Plus one armor for air being researched here. That is really cool. He's getting that shield upgrade that we saw him get earlier. He's getting it intentionally this time now. I think he might have canceled it. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's because... going to target the Greater Ooh, Spire. The Amazing. I cannot believe it. He gets the Greater Spire. Can when you I have saw a, that. The Queen has enough energy, doesn't it? Uh, I'm trying to... Yeah, there it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah he had enough energy for a transfuse. I have no idea why he did not even try to save it. You know, even if he transfused once, though, I'm not sure if he'd be able to save it. It would have probably died as well, but still, at least try and yeah. try to save it if it survives. The when I saw points. that Zealot drop, that was the last thing I expected to happen. Plus three coming out now for these Zerlings, but the plus three of our Slayer's Protoss will be done far in advance. This pylon will be forced to cancel. It doesn't cancel it. The army of Crank is actually moving out with the Mothership, I think, a bit prematurely. Even he realizes this moving back. He's only at 161 supply. He can actually wait for Max, move out with full Mothership energy. They're Especially all Especially with the a, with a kill that he just got on his opponent's tech. He delayed the yeah. Lords even further, and that's a great position. It works for out for him because he made a second Spire to get uh, additional upgrades, so now he's making a, a third Spire as he starts his Greer Spire again, so it's not as late as it could Warp be. Warp Prism speed, and he's also getting another Warp Prism right Right away. Yep. And you know what? I I think it's time to, to stop hype and war prism speed because it's shown time and time again now to be a normal strategy at this point. I'm I'm just I'm so happy to see that that's finally happened. Ace Plus one shield done. Me away with this yeah. game against Boom Boom, and I'm so happy to see that this is getting uh, like a normal thing. We have plus one air upgrades, and to the bottom left, a ton of pylons for the aggression. But the space, uh, the bottom, uh, the top left has been spotted, so now he can attack. But the drop, that's something it that does. Greg did not anticipate, and it suddenly all these circuits force him to retreat. Yeah, he was out way too far in the middle of the map. He had no answer for this a nexus will fall it will be targeted and a second nexus may potentially fall as well looks like the stalkers are going into the correct position now but the zerlings at the natural still remain alive they're starting to take out some of these pylons here he's meanwhile he's another zealot drop the fourth he's trying to get in and kill another nexus and they he will get it sign position but it's not enough but the hatchery will he defend the hatchery at the south with these investors 
He will, in fact, defend with the Infestors. Nicely done. He's got to be careful, though. Does not want to lose any Infestors. Nicely done. Bungles these Zealots, and he makes the, the attempt with the Zerlings very successful. Right now, though, Crank has a really nice timing he can use to move out. He's got plus three or attack, plus two armor with plus three on the way, plus two shields are on the way, his plus one arrow weapons are, is going to finish up here as well. He's got the, the base, the fifth base up at the top. Oh, I, I, I don't know, man. This has actually been such a high-level game we're watching between these two players, but I think That's the Protoss a crazy had a game. huge lead. We have more drops at the bottom right, and now the Protoss player, aka Crank, is moving out. Another drop in the mineral line. He's doing so much damage. I love the multitasking of Freaky here. He's going just all out with these attacks, trying to do so much damage, but at the same time, he has to defend. This is insane. There's action happening everywhere on this map, and at the same time, both players just trying to rely on upgrades again on the macro game, getting additional war prisons now in terms of Frank. He just tries to be aggressive so much. This, I love this. This, I have tears in my eyes just looking at this play, man. How many bases we see on the map right now. Look at the mini-map for just a second, okay? It is crazy. And there think about everywhere for both of them. People who made threads on Team Liquid a while ago saying, well, I don't know if StarCraft 2 will ever reach the level of Brood War, and I don't know <laughs> if people are going to multitask. I don't know about the well, harass. Think Look about the base this, to the man. left side of the map. Slayer Strength knows about it. He wants to attack it, but he can't. There is so much stuff that he has to do right now. He has to defend. He has to put some aggression on this And he will finally, finally take it out. It's, finally, he can send he some units He hasn't been over. able to use it, though, luckily for Crank. He's only mined about 50 gas from there. That's all he got out of that base. I think it was partly also a distraction and a reinforcement hatchery, but does get taken out. There's so many pylons on the map for Crank to use to reinforce. Right now, the income tab is basically dead, even hovering around 1,500 each. Nidus Network oh, is on the way. This War Prism will be denied. I like how he's trying to pay attention to the War Prisms here, but the Nidus Network, that's definitely something uh, that Freaky loves to use here. And this is going to be really, really great. We have additional upgrades, by the way, for our Slayer's player. Yeah, he's, he's getting, getting upgrades, two. and he's getting more armor upgrades. He might even transition at some point into a more heavy air army. Well, now he's taking another base that has been spotted already, and Freaky is not going to waste any time with the Snyders. Uh, Crank's APM, by the way, is about 300, whereas his opponents are covering around 200. Just consider that. This is EPM, I guess, but, I mean, that is, that's pretty high. I mean, we're seeing so much multitasking in this the game, so Nidus much great decision The Nidus is down where? To the top, to the top left. left. He's we trying to attack that left. base. There's only two cannons in play. Oh man, the multitasking for both these players is just out of control. The Nidus finishes. He's doing an Infestor attack. This is what Freaky is known for. At the same time, we have the Wall Prism getting in there at the main base to the bottom left. There it is, just trying to get in in position. But there are so many Spore Crawlers. Top left is being assailed now as once again the Greater Spire is what Crank is aiming for. But he's losing the base to the top left. And this time, we have for Freaky a few Infestors who are able to make sure that these units are not doing too much damage. Oh, Beautiful the cancel yeah. snipes the warp prism. What a map of witness here by both of them. Yeah, but Crank is moving out now. Is he actually going to try to seal the deal? No, he has to turn around again. These investors are in position to drop more infested oh. Terrans. He oh, drops wow. them, and this base is going to lose a ton it. of probes. He has to pull. He Loose does actually spot just it, won. and now, yeah, finally, just in the last second, he was able to pull these probes away. These guys are so map drones. aware, they're so fast. The drones for Freaky though right now with a count of 58 against 66 probes and just look at this production tab. Armor upgrades for air units, charge, everything. They basically try to get every single upgrade in the game at this point. Yep. Well at this point uh, the plus two error has finished. Charge is on the way. Two two upgrades for air coming out for Freaky are going to finish up very soon. The Infestor count for Freaky right now at 16, continuing to keep his Infestor count very high, obviously uh, very high, obviously showing kind of a stylistic sort of thing. I mean, basically, he's shown here in these two games that Infestors are kind of his bread and brother unit. Two War Prisons being made at the same time, plus three shields on the way. Crank has not been able to be aggressive, even though he's had this mothership out so early, so long. He's had not such the upgrade advantage, least, but yeah. yeah, with his main army, he's been forced to turn around at every turn. And at the same time, we have now finally the transition into air units. It makes so much sense with all the upgrades he has. Yep, and double star think about it, Wolf. Yeah, 25 minutes in the game. This feels like we've been on this map for 40 minutes already. Well, with I, all the upgrades that we currently have, I feel like they skipped the early game. They did. I, it, it even feels that way. I, I think we may see a third void Stargate. He's going four. for. I think four he's going to go on the Void Ray composition here. I actually casted this composition uh, yesterday, 
Titan played it against Nurtio and Nurtio was helpless, helpless against a huge amount of Void Rays and then he did something that I really loved, he got High Templars to make sure that he could feed back the Infestors because that's the one thing that can take down your Void Rays so fast, Infestors with a Fungal and if you get some High Templars for the feedback and are able to take them out then suddenly the Void Rays obliterate everything. You know, both players have been, you're right. Carriers, he's yep. going he's for actually, Carriers here. He's getting the Graviton Catapult upgrade now, and you're right, he's going to go for Carriers. I'm not sure if uh, this is the best choice, but it seems to be something he feels comfortable with. And with this many upgrades for his Carriers, I think it may be what he wants. Warp Prism is going to continue to assail the Greater Spire. No, actually targeting down drones first. And these Carriers are going to have plus three shields, plus three armor as well, and so will the Interceptors. Now... Keldor, this is, he's, he's killing an Infestor here as well. This is finally the moment in which the Zerg player has to be on the defensive. This is the first time in minutes we've seen the Zerg not out on the map attacking. This is the moment where Freaky is going to have to defend. Will he be able to defend this Prolos army? He's got a ton of spines in play. His Infestors, he's got so many of them, but he needs to make sure his Broodlords are in position. The War Prism tries to get in once again, and now it's not able to do it. has to back off here, but oh! Oh, we will. Wow. There, there is a stalker nice. attack in the nice. natural, but he is being denied by close. investors, and Crank cannot find an opening. He can't get in. Another Nidus comes down. The resources lost are so even up to this point. 15,000 for both of them, and here comes Crank. Uh -huh. Steve is in. he able to pull this off as Freaky drops the Infestor Terrence once again at oh. his fifth base. You know, ordinarily, someone would look at this and say, well, he pulled his probes. And so this is a lot of infested, infested Terran energy used, but he has so many investors, this is fine. This game is crazy as five carriers are built. Now look at these air upgrades. Yep, it's been ages since I've seen plus three armor for air. He's actually going to hide his carriers quite well here as well. These earlings have not been able to see these. The Warp Prism Harass does continue. He's going to have to be very careful though. Wolf. With I missed the GSTL. I really missed I it. I did too, man. I'm actually... <laughs> I'm actually... Well, I'll... When we have a, a moment to talk about this after all this harass, I'll tell you <laughs> how I feel. But this we have a zealot insane. drop here, but he's already on top of it. Even one broodlord back there, ready to defend. Total map awareness. A huge stalker run by is going to circumvent these spines. He's trying to find additional bases. Look at Crank's bank compared to his opponent, though. He's got a lot more resources here. He's getting plus three. The, inf uh, the interceptor building has commenced. And he's going to blink over here, but he did not look before he blinked at the south. Stalker's blinking into Zergly. It's a bit of a mistake here. Trying to get back here. The, uh, the cooldown is kind of done. Not yet. And they die. We have a ton of carriers right now. He's getting five additional ones, plus three attack up. Right? Even Hallucination being researched. And this ter carrier this attack has been insane. hidden so well that it is going to be tough for our Zerg player to deal with it when he sees it at first. He is going to have to start Corruptors. Remember, both players are going to be at 3-3 weapons for air. We the Zerg is coming here before the cannons are ready. We have 27 Infestors on this map. 27. It kind of blows my mind. Freaky, once again, we're heavily relying on this unit. Another Knight has Another comes Nidus. in here. And one Stalker, a little bit lost. He tries to walk, walk well, to wheel his way through the Spine Crawlers, but this guess what? Not the map, buddy. This is insane, man. 3-3 three, three upgrades going to be done for the air units before our Zerg player here. The Infestors are coming out after that Nidus. His Colossi are already moving down. He knows what's up. Will he be able to force the cancel? Remember, these Infested Terrans do not have upgrades. They only have plus one. Uh-oh, so uh uh-oh, another Nidus, but it has been denied. The Nidus has been denied at the top right, and now the Infestors are in position. Try to escape here as the Colossi move in. He's not! They're he misclicked! To get in. He misclicked! Oh! Now he realizes this. He loses a few Infestors oh, there. Two. Five, those five carriers you talked about earlier are about to finish. That's going to put him up to a total of 10 carriers with plus three finishing. He's going to hit a timing here. His opponent does not know about the carriers. He will move out. He will attack. And quite frankly, I think he will win with this composition with heavily upgraded carriers. His opponent will have to desperately get the Corruptor has, switch out. He will have 30 Infestors. That's something to consider as well, but there are a ton of Colossi out here too. It's all going to come down to the positioning and if he spots these carriers before they hit his base. Because if he does, he can try to prepare by adding a ton of Spore Crawlers. Right now he's adding a few more Spore Crawlers. In total, he's got about... Uh, it looks like he's got about five across his Spine Crawler spread. 
This aggression on this map, it blows me away. We have Zerglings everywhere. By now, Crank finally enough cannons in position to the top left that he's able to defend against it. But you're so right about this play with the carriers. It's going to be brutal for Freaky. With the Infestors, he might be able to work against it by time, maybe take down a few of these carriers, but he has to have some Corruptors as well. This I don't believe that he can rely on his Infestors alone, even though he has 30. And now, finally, does he see it? Yes, he All sees. See, this is exactly what he needed he because now he can prepare. And how will he prepare? He's actually he builds, he builds more infestors. Well, those infestors were built be right before he saw. So now he's maxed out. No, he he's actually built two additional ones when he realized. He actually, that infestors yeah, you're right. Because these two, yeah, these two are gonna finish, and then we're gonna see two more. He's gonna have to use some units. I don't think even with this many infestors, I don't think he's gonna be able to hold this. But this many colossi out. Uh oh, where is the nidus? Where is the nidus that he's currently building? He actually doesn't have any colossi left either. Where is this nidus wolf? Top I'm right. To find it. Oh. No. Where Oh, oh, there it is. Okay, oh, so okay. taking not a in smart the base. location. He lost all his Colossi somewhere. I don't know where they are, but they're not here, man. And with those Colossi not here, Infested Terrans alone may be enough, in fact. Oh, uh, then He may catch these spot. Infestors, though. Oh, no, he's he not fumbles. moving. He's not. Now he finally starts to move. He's just going to fight here. <laughs> he slows down a ton of Infested Terrans but just he's not to block killing, him. He's not killing any Interceptors. He's, he's using a lot of energy. energy. Yeah, he's not killing anything here. He's buying time, but what is his transition? What is the next step? Yeah, Calder, I actually think this may be the best game of StarCraft 2 I have ever watched. There have to be a few Corruptors. I cannot even... He's going for Zerglings. He doesn't even try to get Corruptors. I mean, it's hard to get the Corruptor count up, but you have to have something in composition with your Infesta play, but he only relies on the Fungals. Yeah. And, of course, on the Infesta Terrans. Yeah, Fungals and Infesta Terrans together, plus the f he's made a decent amount of Spore Crawlers, but not enough. He only has three to defend at this location. He's not going to use Corruptors. I mean, he can't build enough Corruptors to make it work, so he has to rely on these Infestors, but... I would we like have to see a mix. He needs to, to like throw his Broodlords away or something. I don't know. I can't remember when I've seen fully upgraded carriers the last time. I've and seen them a few times, but not 16. Not 16, man. He's making now... Here's what I think he needed to be doing Spore earlier. 10 Spore everywhere. Crawlers. He already has a few of them, but now he's getting additional Calder. 11. Guess what else he has? This is something I forgot to mention. He has Neural Parasite, so he can also use this to his advantage as well. If he gets the mother If he can get close enough, he may be able to use this. Infested Terrans starting to go down. Wow. Here come the Interceptors. The Infested Terrans are growing in number. He's trying to get, trying to seal the deal here. Slayer Skrank is moving in. All oh, those Infested Terrans, are they going to be enough? And as Jose Freaky, he's getting more Infestors, more and more and more. And then the mothership, it dies. The mothership, mothership is dies. down, and look at how many, how many do we have? Infestors, Aaron, there's 70 of them, 75, 80, the infestors, 86. The Infestors take out majority of the Interceptors. <laughs> the Interceptor count <laughs> flew down to about 50 for moments there. Once all of these Infested Terrans fall, though, he may be able to continue to be aggressive and siege up those sport callers. He's At got more Terrans right on the way. At the top right are the Broodlords doing damage, trying to take down not only the forges, but also the pylons and all these tech structures for Crank. He's this making game a few, is madness. He's making a few Void Rays to help deal with those. They will spawn pretty quickly. Uh -oh. oh, he's going for these Infestors. A lot of them are Look burned, but he doesn't have enough energy. Callers. Oh, Kelder, you know what's so genius is he's actually just going to ignore these Infestors. If he can't build any more Infestors and all of these are out of energy, he can actually just ignore them and go and kill these bases. He kills we the base have and 41. gets out. He has 41 Infestors! A good fumble here, but I don't think this is enough. Kelder is losing so many Infestors now. The supply for our Zerg player is starting to plummet. It turns actually, out, man. He doesn't lose any Infestors, Wolf. He only loses Infested Terrans. He has still 40. But the, but the Interceptor count is now over 120. And here are a few Corruptors. 114 cor uh, inf corrupt uh, 120 thingies, interceptors, interceptors coming through here, and I think that is way too many. He can replace them. The Zerg is starting to, to to fall behind here in production. It looks like he will finally hold off the Broodlords in his main base as well, with a few carriers spawning and the Void Rays there. I think that Crank has finally done it. The Slayers team starting to clap on the bench. More Infested Terrans coming down, but he they can actually just escape. Energy. They he are escape. out of energy, and that's the big problem. He doesn't use the Fungal to keep the Carriers yeah, in he position. did not use enough fungals, I feel. A few more fungals could have done so much for him. 
Of course, it's hard to use them. You have to unburrow them in order to use the fungal, but still, he's getting eight additional infestors. This will be the highest amount he of has no I've ever left. seen he in has a no game. Economy, and this carrier composition will win the day. 45 infestors. I completely agree with you. Those carriers are doing so much damage, and he's out of energy with infestor play, but still. If he would have used the energy a little bit different, combined the fungal with his infested marines, I think that would have been, might have been, one of the options that he had in this well, match. Yeah. You know, let's be honest, how often do you face a 16-3-3-3 upgraded carrier armed with Graviton Catapult? The Infestor Terrans, uh, or Infestors, I guess I should say, keep calling Infestor Terrans because that's all they've been for, are going for a huge counterattack. In fact, over 30 of them moving across the map in a big pack, but there are tons of cannons and they don't have the energy that they need to actually break through at the north. <laughs> this, way, this game is just simply completely crazy. 40 infestors, 16, 16 carriers, 125 interceptors He's trying now. to break up the ramp. There are too many cannons in play, though. Even if he breaks up the ramp, the infestor Terrans can't kill the Nexus. <laughs> <laughs> and the bases are going down. It looks like Freaky is going to be out here showing some great investor play, but it just was not enough, Calder. The supply, 186 to 97. The worker count, 60 to 20. Whatever they feed the Nesosa players, I want something. <laughs> I want a bit of it. That's, that is insane. And Crank, oh my god, 3-3-3 three, three, three carriers. Uh, it just blows my mind. This game is, this is the second game that we cast, and both of them have been like, what is happening here? Yeah, it's amazing, in fact. Carriers will finally take out the last of the infested Terrans over here in the north, and the base of Freaky is all but destroyed. His hive will finally fall, and this game is over. Crank with an amazing performance. Great multitasking from both. GG! 1-1 now in this clan series. What a match! What a match indeed. This feels like fun day Monday. In, man, in, in Toon Valley is a map that just shows late game play, but that that level of harassment and multitasking, the upgrades that we saw, the decision making from both players to the end, was actually something that just made me like, in my mouth, I couldn't even, I struggled to get the words out, but, oh my god, Slayers tying things up here, 1-1. One, one. Wow, simply wow. What a game. The Team League is back, guys. The Team League is back. It's back indeed. GSTL. Look at Crank here. And there is a, and a shot of, They are yeah. stunned, and I, I'm as well. I wonder what we're going to see next. The map is going to be Antigua. Okay, so I feel very strongly it's either going to be a Terran or it will be a Protoss. And the idea here with the Protoss is to eliminate Antigua from the map pool if they choose a PvP here. But I think we're going to see Jokchi. If it's going to be Jokchi, I think we are going to see Mass Banshees. <laughs> <laughs> they probably they probably had a few Jason and were like, okay, okay, I'm going for Mass Infestors, what are you going to do? Well, I opt for Carrier, so they just can pick one unit, I feel. Well, this, honestly, these games were the composition, cool. pretty cool. The tech, the hiding the tech that we saw from Crank was the key. He hid the tech from his opponent, and then he was so stuck on the infestors he couldn't start building the corruptors early enough because he was maxed. So he's like, "Well, I can't throw away all my infestors to try to remake corruptors. I can't do that." And if he like has 185 supply, and he's like, "Well, I can make corruptors," and he's gonna have six corruptors against 15 carriers. That doesn't work either. Do you know what I love the most though? I love that we had carriers and that we had all these investors. I th really think that game was exciting as it was, but the mid game was what actually interested me the most. The harassment. Those Nidus networks, everywhere just one Nidus after another, trying for the circling run buys at the same time Crank with all these war prisons that he has, pulling an ace here and always just trying to harass his opponent, warping in additional units, just sniping this great Aspire. That was what really impressed me. The late game was awesome, but the mid game where all of them, they were just everywhere on the map. A run by to the left, another Nidus to the right, and it was just simply amazing. I loved this game. Yeah, it was sick, man. I, I mean, I cannot believe it, what we just saw. Let's find out who our next NS Hosa player is going to be. And it is, in fact, going to be Jokchi. It's man, Jokchi I am two for again, two so man. far with my predictions right now. <laughs> I should be a coach. Well, I guess I technically once was, but anyways... Jokchi picking an uh, Antigua Shipyard here. He's going to be playing up against Crank, who has shown great PvT in the past as well. Jokchi has a lot more experience in that booth, though, I will say. 
Yeah, he definitely has. He is a former champion, and well, we have Jaxi with this code A ranking here right now, and this game, wow, I'm. <laughs> if we have more of this, I kind of need. Cover, this I is day one, man. Drink here, this drink. Exactly, this is day one. This is the opening match, and I certainly did not expect this style of play, but I'm loving it. Yeah, me too, man. I'm actually so happy to see this. Uh, this I'm, is this is so crazy. I am freaking out a little bit now. Jokchi is the Terran player on NS Hosa that was able to score an all kill in the past. Consider that he has actually shown better results in Team League, arguably, than his individual league. Even though he is a champion, and that's saying a lot. Now, Jokchi's win rate against Protoss is actually 61% currently in Korea. Crank's win rate against Terran is pretty low. In fact, 43.48%. And guys, if you haven't done it yet, then check out gomtv.net slash tickets. If you are currently watching this on the low quality stream, then definitely make sure to get a pass for si for this season. It's only getting better. This is up, guys. also ama already amazing, but wow. gonna, This is going to be for this nine weeks. going to be insane. Nine weeks. Think about that. Nine weeks of content. Are you going to stay up every night to watch this? Of course not. you got to get the buds, man. And if you want to stay up, if you're going to stay up every night to watch this, first of all, you're a crazy person and I love you. But secondly, <laughs> you might as well stay up and watch it in high quality. Exactly. Let's be real for a second, okay? You're so right. This is the GSTL, in my opinion. This is one of the this is the best team league in the entire world and one of the best competitions ever. Think, think about it. How crazy are you if you stay up until 5 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning to watch this every night and you watch it in low quality just to save a few <laughs> bucks and you're not supporting the league? What? You are crazy. Exactly. You're, you're doing the right things, but you're not thinking about it the right way, okay? Go to gomtv.net slash tickets and check them out while we are preparing for Jakji against Krang. Terran versus Protoss and NS Hosa. They certainly want to win here. Yeah, they do, man. With Jakji in the game already, Slayers is now just thinking about who they are going to send out in case that Jakji is able to win against Krang. But Krang, he tries to claim victory. He wants to win this. He wants to take another win here in the team league and show his skill just qualified for Code A, and now he's up against the former Code S champion. Yeah, and Jokchi, basically his sound's not quite working yet, so we're gonna get that Gom Wizard in there to fix that. By the way, uh, I witnessed yesterday the Gom Wizard playing Diablo 3 on Nightmare with a level 60 character, and I've never seen someone play Diablo 3 so fast. I think I gotta tell the Gom Wizard he needs to start streaming. <laughs> I bet people would watch that. Like, I bet a ton of people would watch that, in fact. But anyway, yeah, I would watch the game. I would watch, man. I would check. He that probably guy out. does not even have to touch his keyboard. He just tells his character what to do. Yeah, he actually just like when I, while he's playing, like all the screens moving really fast. He's actually like, leaning down on the computer, like touching the actual parts <laughs> inside. He sticks his hand. He's like moving his fingers around the Stroking graphics the card. CPU. Yeah, he's doing that, man. That's what he's doing. Well, it looks like now uh, both of them are ready. And Jokchi is in the lobby. Again, our map is going to be Antigua Shipyard. Now, this map is actually, I think, a really good one for this matchup. Obviously, we've talked about this thousands of times. Probably, like, almost tens of thousands of times. Like, overall, not just me and other commentators, but... But these maps are simply great. We have new ones as well, and we'll have to talk about them. We'll have to see what players are going to do here, but... Antigua Shipyard has Yeah, it's a great while. map for this matchup. I think what's most important, there's two points of contest on this map in this matchup. Of course, the center and the late game, so that you can have that vision and you can be the one who gets the faster feedback, the faster storm, the faster EMP, the faster snipe. Those spells become so important. Your Viking positioning, all of those things so important. But also, in the mid game, that two medevac push on this map, it's very easy to elevate her into the main. The yep. Protoss has to walk so far around to get back to that bottom of that ramp. Well, very likely, if we don't see tank play, we're going to see that two medevac push and it's very very difficult for someone like Crank to hold that. Our first game without a Zerg player today we have Crank coming up against Jokchi here. Terran versus Protoss. He had the GSTL with Caldo and Wolf. 